Why do you deserve to go to heaven? Uh, that's a great question. I think that I should go to heaven because I never miss a Sunday of church. I'm always here. So I feel like that's a good reason. Why do you deserve to go to heaven? Well, I've never stolen. I've never lied. And uh, I'm a pretty selfless person. Why do you deserve to go to heaven? I pray before I eat my food. So I feel like I'm a pretty good guy. Um, another reason... <laughs> Another reason I think I should go to heaven is because um, I give offerings a lot. Uh, I try to help the homeless when I can. I have the Bible app on my phone. So I go on there and I like highlight verses and I have my own time with God. So I don't have the Bible app on my phone because I need storage for Facebook Marketplace. But, um, I don't know why God would choose anyone over me. I mean, I did everything right, so. Um, you know, I'm a great guy. I'm a great son, great brother. I've never been to jail, so I just feel like that's a good reason. I haven't heard from you down there. Why do you deserve to go to heaven? I, I don't deserve to go to heaven. I've sinned purposely and accidentally, but there was a man who was perfect and who took everything that was meant for me so that I may have the opportunity to go to heaven. So, no, I don't deserve to go to heaven, but because of Jesus, I now have the opportunity to. Aiden's response is correct. None of us deserve to go to heaven. None of us deserve an eternity in the presence of God. It's a gift to all of us from our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died for all of our sins. He lived a perfect life and paid a price we could never. He loves us, and if we accept him as our Savior, we'll be with him forever. As Christians, we should never be too careful not to think it's something we've earned. If we have an attitude that it was something we worked for, it may keep us from sharing it freely with others the way it was intended to be. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Harper. Uh, and this morning, I'd like to start off by telling you two stories. It was finally that time of year again, January 13th. The first round of the 2024 NFL playoffs was about to get started. The Cleveland Browns would go on the road to face the Houston Texans and rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud. The Texans would dominate, winning 45 to 14. The win over the Browns made C.J. Stroud, a rookie quarterback out of Ohio State University, the youngest quarterback to ever win a playoff game. He was interviewed by an NBC reporter after the game where he gave all the glory to his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After they were done talking, NBC posted the interview on Twitter along with other social media platforms. But there was a problem. NBC had edited out C.J. Stroud crediting God and talking about Jesus. This made people very upset, but there was no change to the edited video. On January 5th, eight days before the story I just told you occurred, a gay and satanic music artist posted a viral video on social media, claiming that he had become a Christian and that the music industry had tried to make him satanic. He's done things to mock Christianity before and promote the devil. And I said that he'd rather party in hell than live in heaven with Jesus. However, because of his past and his reputation for mocking Christians, many were skeptical about his claim of returning to Christianity, but they were hopeful. As it turns out, he was mocking us again. A week later, on January 12th, he released a music video with a new song. His video mocked God on the cross, mocked Jesus on the cross, mocked Noah shepherding animals into the ark ahead of the flood, and mocked celebrities who had spoken up about Jesus. His song was promoted on all streaming platforms, and his song reached the Billboard Top 100 songs. Now, the almost immediate response to these two instances are to point fingers at media outlets for allowing the anti-Christian things to be aired 
and to censor the sharing of Jesus. However, it's our fault as Christians. It's our fault because we no longer live according to the standards laid out for us in the Bible. We've conformed to the social norms of our society. Instead of living for God, we mostly live for ourselves. Instead of boycotting companies, organizations, and artists that go against the standard, standards of God, we give them our time, attention, and money. We're too afraid of what people may think of us today. We've been filled with fear, and it has kept us from living out God's purpose for our lives. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Fear keeps us from telling the people around us who are lost and living in sin about the gospel of Christ, that Jesus loves them and that he died on the cross for them. By not standing up for fear of how it would impact our lives, we've let schools ban prayer, churches have accepted things like premarital sex, adultery, and gay marriage. Excessive alcohol use, marijuana use, and viewing pornography are all considered morally acceptable in today's culture. There is a line between loving the sinner and accepting the sin, and in today's society, we've accepted the sin and been completely okay with it. We all struggle with sin in some way. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What separates believers from the rest of the world is that we know Jesus, the forgiver of our sins, and the one who died for them. We seek him while repenting of our sins. The world is morally crumbling and needs Jesus. Some of the biggest stars in the entertainment industry are going against God's word. For instance, one of the biggest stars in the world can be seen mocking Christians in her music videos and making them appear as if they are mean, dirty, and unintelligent. She uses her platform to promote all kinds of things that go against the word of God. Another big artist had a very satanic performance at the Grammys that was also streamed everywhere. We've let the world get to this point by either being too fearful or complacent to live our lives boldly, proclaiming the truth of Jesus. We need to change. It's time for us to live boldly for Jesus. This doesn't mean telling everyone they're sinners and getting into arguments over the, with them over what is right and what is wrong. We should simply be telling them about Jesus and what he's done for us. The awesome thing about Jesus is he loves everyone. The creator of the universe loves each and every one of us equally, even the ones that mock him and disrespect him. He wants everyone to be saved. Let's remember that as we go through each day. We are saved by the grace of God, and that grace is for all mankind. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. We must quit living complacent, fearful lives while the devil keeps spreading his lies in this world. We need to share the truth of Jesus so God can work through us to save the lost. I want to close with this. How many people will go through their lives never hearing the truth of Jesus just because we didn't take the time to share him? Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let's quit worrying about the fate of this world because in the end, we know it will be destroyed. Instead, let's start focusing on the lost souls that are in it. Let's obey God by going out and telling everyone about Jesus. We should be willing to praise God anywhere. Sometimes you gotta stay.
Good morning again. Um, if you want to follow in your Bibles, turn to 1 Chronicles 16, verses 8 through 36. Um, while you're doing that, I'm Pasco. I'm going to be bringing the second message this morning. If you're here last week, much like Mr. Josh said, I would probably be more comfortable sitting in one of those pews with y'all right now. What is God's plan for the youth to share his message? That being said, let's start by reading his word. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Proclaim his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell about all his wonderful works. Honor his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his wonders and the judgments he has pronounced. You offspring of Israel, his servant, Jacob's descendants, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments govern the whole earth. Remember his covenant forever, the promise he ordained for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, swore to Isaac, and confirmed to Jacob as a decree, and to Israel as an everlasting covenant. I will give the land of Canaan to you as your inherited portion. When, there, when they were very few in number, very few indeed, and temporary residents in Canaan, wandering from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their behalf. Do not touch my anointed ones or harm my prophets. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonderful works among all peoples. 
For the Lord is great and is highly praised. He is feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice, and let them say among the nations, The Lord is king. Let the sea and everything in it resound. Let the fields and all that is in them exult. Then the trees of the forest will shout for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And say, Save us, God, of our salvation. Gather us and rescue us from the nations, so that we may give thanks to your holy name and rejoice in your praise. May the Lord, the God of Israel, be praised from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. These verses are a sacred song or hymn. They instruct us to give praise and thanks to the Lord. They also warn us about putting other gods or idols before him. We should be praising and seeking God because he is holy and good, and he created us, provides for us, and saved us. He not only deserves our worship, but requires it. There are many distractions in the world today that we let consume our time and keep us from spending it with God. A lot of these things that distract us aren't even bad or against God. We just sometimes choose to put them before God. If you've ever spent time looking at TV, Reels, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook for the older people in here, or any other form of media, you can see how easily you get caught up watching whatever it is, and the next thing you know, there's no time left for God. Even if you had planned to read your Bible, pray, or do anything productive at all, that time got taken up by a distraction. This is just one of the many examples of something taking God's time. And again, it isn't even a bad thing necessarily, but we've chosen to put it first. When these distractions start to take up all of your time and block God out, They become idols. These idols can come in any form. They can be anything that takes our focus off of God. Matthew 6, 19 through 24 says, Don't collect for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But collect for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is good your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light within you is darkness, how deep is that darkness? No one can be a slave of two masters, since either he will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot be slaves of God and money. We can't serve two masters. We can't be full of light and darkness. In these verses, we are warned against material possessions and money being put before God. But anything we put ahead of God could easily fit into these verses. Anything we put before God will take our focus off of him and become our idol. None of us want to hear that we have idols, me included, because that's not a good thing. Even still, it's something that I'm sure many of us struggle with. Having an idol or idols is not something that any of us should want to have in our life. A lot of times, we end up just mindlessly using our time, doing other things, and they become idols, even if it isn't our intention. With phones, TVs, computers, sports, our toys, and hobbies, there are more distractions today than ever. A few verses that warn us against idols are Exodus 20, 3 through 4. Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself, whether in the shape of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. 1 John 5, 21. Little children, guard yourself from idols. And Psalms 115, 4 reads, Their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. Now, I don't think any of us are going out and sculpting some sort of golden figure to worship or anything like that. But if we aren't careful, everyday things like work, hobbies, and other tasks or distractions can become our idols. Exodus 23 said, Do not have other gods besides me. So we shouldn't have anything that comes before God. He wants to be and deserves to be first in our life. But we all seem to struggle with keeping him first because we just get caught up with other things, or as I mentioned before, distracted. In Matthew 22, 35 and 36, an expert in the law asked Jesus which command in the law is the greatest. His response is in Matthew 22:37. 37. This verse reads, He said to him, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. God should come first. This verse does not say love with some of your heart, soul, and mind. It says all. It's very apparent that we aren't supposed to put anything before God. So I'm just going to finish up by saying, if you catch yourself using all your free time with distractions and call yourself a Christian, does God really come first in your life? Are you giving him all or just a little bit here and there? He is our creator, savior, and provider. He deserves our time. And even more than that, he wants it. Think about that. God, the creator of all, wants to spend time with us. So next time you're about to be distracted by this world, pick up the word of God and read or pray. Maybe even just sing praises to him. I guarantee this time with the Lord will have more of an impact on your life than all the distractions and idols we can sometimes allow to come before him. Remember, Jesus loves us. He just wants us to love him too. As the youth come up, please stand. As we close the day, we're going to do a little recap. Today in Harper's message, we learned about the shortfalls we have in this world today. And in Pasco's message, we learned about the distractions. As human beings, every day we make mistakes and sin. We put too many things in priority before God, yet we should strive to not let that happen. More importantly, it's about what we do afterwards that matters the most. Forgiveness and repent from those sins. Maybe today you heard something that you need to work on. Well, now's that time to start working. Take this moment to pray and talk to God. The altar is open. The youth will pray with you if you come down. As we continue to close, we're going to close the service rejoicing in song. Choice but to believe my doubts have earned. 
We want to thank everyone that came out today and worshiped with us for Youth Sunday. If you would, bow your heads and we'll be closing prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for allowing these youth, Lord, to get up here and to show their love for you. And Lord, we just ask that you would uh, be with everyone here as they go out into the world this week. Lord, we ask that you would just keep, allow us to keep you as our number one priority in everything we do. And Lord, just watch us, watch the, those, those distractions. And Lord, we just ask that you would um, allow us to allow us to keep you first through the week. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you would uh, keep us safe and uh, allow us to go out and share your your will and name each and every day. Lord, we ask us your holy name. Amen. Before before y'all walk out, we get, want to have a special prayer this morning. Um, Tina is actually going to be leaving.